Hello and Namaskar. Welcome to another session of BW Farhana Tidbits, where I share some of my knowledge and experience. My name is Dibanshu Mukherjee, and today we are going to discuss no PSA, no problem. PSA, which stands for Persistent Staging Area, has been around since the very early years of SAP BW, and has been a stalwart first staging layer inside SAP BW. This mighty warrior has helped all of us BW consultants to handle data load errors by letting us manipulate data inside the PSA table. Well, this warrior has served its purpose very well, but now is finally retired. So then who has taken its place? And how will we manipulate data now? Well, to answer the questions, let's see how this table is replaced in BW for HANA. So before we delve deeper into the replacement of PSA, let's first look at the definition of PSA. So the persistent staging area, or in short called the PSA, is the first inbound storage area or the first table in BW where the data from the different source system comes in and sits. The data in this particular table is unchanged from the source, meaning the format remains the same and the structure remains the same. So it's one is to one from the source. Now, when you load flat files, there might be minor conversions happening like the date format from DDMMYYYY to YYYYMMTD. But apart from those minor conversions, the data remains as it is one is to one. So the PSA is the first layer or the first table in BW where the data comes and sits. And this is where we use to manipulate data in case of any errors. So this was one of the very important tables in BW. All right, so now let's look at what is this PSA replaced by? So PSA is obsolete since BW for HANA 1.0 and PSA is now replaced by inbound table of advanced DSO. Yes, we can now edit the data in the inbound table of the advanced DSO, which is the first table of the advanced DSO before the activation. Let's see how we can do that. So here you can see if I have a DTP and that DTP has a source as a flat file data source, which I have created. And this is the Eclipse editor, which is the new Eclipse based DTP editor. And here you can see the adapter is load text type file from local workstation, meaning there is an Excel sheet, which is there on my desktop. And from the desktop, I'm loading the data into the advanced DSO. And you can see that the path is there in the file name. Uh, just uh, let's just have a quick look at the data. So it's a very simple data, just one record. We have the material, plant, quantity, and the unit of measurement. We have triple one as the material, plant as P123, and this is the particular column which we will change. Quantity is 200 and unit is kilogram. So now let's load the data. So how you load the data on the DTP screen on the top right hand side corner you have a menu button and from there you click on execute in dialog and that will start the DTP and on the next screen you will see that the processing mode is automatically chosen as serial SAP HANA execution in dialog process you just click on execute once you execute it will ask you whether you want to see the request monitor we'll click on yes and there you can see that our one record from the flat file which is the excel sheet on my desktop is loaded successfully in the inbound table of the advanced dso now let's look at the advanced dso so previously we used to have manage screen manage dso manage queue in the prior bw versions the same option now cube is not there of course so for the same option for advanced dso is again found as one of the options on the top right hand side menu which says manage target so once you click on manage target it will take you to the bw for hana cockpit which is the web portal so on bw for hana cockpit you can see that the manage dso screen will be shown to you and you can see that there is the request tsn tsn is the new format of the request which is transaction sequence number and you can see that it is 
there in the inbound table. So the storage type is inbound table, not the active data table. So this is before the activation. And we have one record and the last action is green. Green means successful and the last action was loading because it was a DTP load. And if you want to check the log, there's an option to check the logs here. Now, before we see how we can change this particular request data, I just want to quickly show you the another way to load the flat file. And this is only relevant for flat file. So we can directly load a flat file from BW for HANA cockpit. So there's an option on the top right hand side, uh, top right hand side screen on the manage DSO on the BW for HANA cockpit. You have something called further actions and under further actions, you have something called upload data. So if you click on that upload data, you will see that you will have the option to browse and go to your desktop or your local workstation and choose the file. Here I have chosen the same file quantity.csv and this file we would like to load directly into the advanced DSO inbound table. And this particular option gives the ability to do that. So once you click on browse, choose your file and then the system will automatically propose the mapping that means the field mapping to the columns in your flat file mapping. So once everything looks good, you can click on the upload button and it will throw you a pop-up saying that the flat file upload is successful. So now if you go to the request screen, that is the manage DSO, you will see that we have two requests loaded in the inbound table of the advanced DSO. The first is the loading and the second one is the loading file so that means bw for hana cockpit clearly delineates or distinguishes between a regular dtp flat file load and a direct bw for hana cockpit flat file load and then once you click on the request so we can click on any of the request i am choosing here the first request so once you click on the request and go to the detail screen which is the manage request screen you will see all the details with respect to that particular request tsn and on the bottom right hand side is an option where you can change the records so this is where the magic happens friends so this is where you can change the records in the inbound table so once you click on change request data you can see that you will be presented with a screen where the data will be editable that means you can modify the data so here as an example i'm modifying the plant value from p123 to p567 so once you have done all your changes you can click on save button a pop-up message will come saying that yes your modification is successfully saved and now once you go back you can see that there will be another action which will be added which is called editing that means system actually uh, records this particular process of editing under a separate process and the logs for that also can be seen from here. Once you are uh, good with the changes, you have made all the modifications you want, you can click on the activate button on the BW for HANA cockpit. So once you activate, it will show you the number of requests for us. There are two requests, each having, each having one record. So we will click on this activate request by request, which will do it one by one. And once it's activated, you can see the logs that it has activated. That means it has moved the data from inbound table to active data table, and it has removed the data from the inbound table. And then uh, you can see from the main manage screen that both the requests are now successfully activated and the storage type has now changed previously from the inbound table to the active data table because the activation has taken place and that you can see from the last action which says activating. Please don't get confused by the word activating. That does not mean that it's in process. This green square box should be your indicator which says that it is completed. On the top you can see we have green we have a red and we have a yellow. So green means it's successfully completed. And then the final step is to display the data to make sure that our modification has successfully moved to the active data table. You can again click on further actions and display data. 
so once you display data you can see that in the data tab the record from our modification is successfully visible p567 and the first one which is p123 is the first load via the dtp which we did not modify we just modified the record records from the flat file upload but you can do the exact same thing for the record for the request loaded from the dtp no difference there so this is how we can change the data now we can have the same functionality as psa now in the inbound table of the dso or the advanced dso no dso sorry my bad advanced dso and finally i just want to touch upon something called dtis which is data transfer intermediate storage now as a part of dtp also pw for hana has given you an option to check the records and uh, manipulate the records if required in the dtp this is nothing but an error stack in the previous bw versions we used to call this error stack and now it is called dtis data transfer intermediate storage however this a cannot you know uh, or, or does not replace as psa because this will retain the records only when the record uh, only when the request fails so if the request is green that means the data records are deleted from the dtis also so in cases where the request succeeds but the activation fails the inbound table gives you the chance to edit the data fix it and then push it to the active data table and activate it successfully so this is the replacement of psa and this is how you can modify the data before loading into the active data table thank you so much for listening in i really hope this helped you understand what is the replacement of psa in bw for hana please subscribe to my channel for regular updates in videos and give me a thumbs up if you like this video thank you and i'll see you in the next one